bumps. We are going to discuss them. I have a set of images for you, and we're going to go over each one of these in this video. Uh, I'll take you through all of these and just make some general comments and most of the main points I want to make on each of these images. And then um, in subsequent videos, hopefully not more than one or two extra videos uh, on bumps, uh, I will scroll around in Google Earth and uh, take you on a tour of some of these areas so you can get a better feel for the context and what's really going on in the example I'm showing. Okay, so let's start with this one. Here's the thumbnail for this video, and this is the steppe geoglyphs of Kazakhstan. And it's basically just a, a scattered array of, some of them are pretty far apart, just kind of sparsely distributed across the landscape, and just uh, piles of earth. Uh, not quite sure if it's dirt or rocks. It must be somewhat resilient if it's pretty old. But yeah, so we've got these, this kind of uh, box with an X in it. This one is just like a cross, not perfectly straight as we're seeing, kind of woogly, wiggly. Uh, and pretty good resolution on this image as we're seeing here. And when I take you uh, to the area on Google Earth, I'll show you that it's not just these uh, configurations that have the, the bumps or mounds, it's uh, the surrounding area as well. Uh, it has uh, less, less coherent um, distribution of mounds in the surrounding area, but there's still other, other stuff to look at in the area. So it's not just these mounds or bumps, it's uh, the surrounding area as well. So what I'm thinking perhaps is that these are a uh, potentially like a giveaway that uh, the, the other places where you see these bumps are not natural, but in fact artificial. <clears throat> and one more here. Uh, a circular array of, or arrangement of bumps. And this one, yet another one, we have this tri-spiral and then these uh, additional mounds or circles or dots here and some more in the area, area as well. And we might as well call them uh, well, I'm kind of lumping some different things into the same video or category. Uh, some bumpy stuff, some uh, and just anything that looks more or less like a dot or a spot on the landscape. And also um, we'll discuss something that's more like a dent or an indentation. Um, so we don't just have uh, bumpy landscapes, we have denty landscapes or uh, the whole landscape is a uh, spotted with uh, a bunch of indented scoops or holes. So we've got mounds, we've got holes, and uh, kind of just discussing all of those in one episode. Like I said before, these categories are kind of arbitrary, just trying to get somewhat organized. So, okay, uh, just to mention here, uh, this is Bolsa Chica in Southern California, and these, um, so I'm still somewhat embarrassed to say I was thinking that they might be outstretched octopus tentacles or squid tentacles <laughs> at some point. We've got these, um, these channels with the bumps on the side, obviously, or the mounds or spoil islands or um, spoil piles. I think spoil piles is the best name to describe these because it's where a dredge comes through and then spits up material on the side. So I, I don't want to spend too much time on that, obviously, but uh, it's just something to be aware of when you're looking around. So I don't want you to get tripped up, tripped up on it like I did. Um, and uh, there's lots of variations like in, in size and... Uh, um, layout and, and kind of look 
to the uh, the bumps along the channels or the piles. So here in Texas, presumably um, just uh, oil activity and natural gas activity. Uh, so we'll move along here. Here's a closer look at it. See the kind of bigger spoil piles and then the smaller ones alongside this channel here that's probably pretty recent. Uh, yep, it's just something to be aware of before we go looking into uh, the weirder examples. Mexico most likely spoil piles from when this coast was maintained at some point or dredged and yeah but just down the way from that we have something a little weirder we have the natural beach ridges or coastal dunes um, or streaks as I'm calling them and then the streaks get bumpy like of their own accord like without looking like there's dredging to make that happen uh, and then we have these slightly odd patterns which do look like they're utilized by modern uh, aquaculture or something so they may there may be uh, both natural um, this may be like a confluence of natural and modern stuff perhaps um, but there are some anomalous things in this area so I will take you here on Google Earth and um, show you all the uh, the fine parallel lines and and we'll try and suss out what's going on here because it's like bumpy streaks here so um, that could be an indicator that the other bumpy uh, or um, linear stretches of bumps are not necessarily due to dredging in every case. So potentially, potentially. It's, uh, like here in uh, Lake Junin, we have uh, Peru, we have these uh, mounds or spoil piles alongside so yes, something did dredge or work over this um, long stretch of river and not to mention all these things. I already showed you this area pretty thoroughly so I don't think I'll give you a super long tour of this area but um, wouldn't surprise me if this dredging is in some way, shape or form um, uh, part of the the big conspiracy somehow uh, or the the weird terraforming this okay um, or it could be modern obviously but uh, okay Russia this I think it's an island in northern Russia it's like very bumpy and a huge portion of the Russian landscape has this like cracked kind of po polygonal uh, uh, surface texture which presumably is natural and um, just from weathering and uh, the the climate and a number of um, contributing factors but uh, we also have the uh, the bumpy landscape to consider and this also uh, may be completely natural just uh, we'll take a look here and see how how it stands up to uh, or compares to other areas that are a little, a little um, suspicious in my opinion. So San Simeon, California, then um, looking similar to the San Andreas Fault area. We kind of took a look at this area already and uh, in one of the previous videos. And um, so San Simeon is not really close to uh, the San Andreas Fault area. It's pretty far away but we have a similar type of, I'm not sure if this is bumpy or denty, if you know what I mean, like just kind of looks like pock, pock marks on the landscape. So we'll take a look at this area, see what's going on there. San Andreas Fault area is pretty bumpy, like rocky mounds of earth. And presumably it's um, seismic in nature, like these plates smushing up against each other and wrinkling. And then these like, uh, little micro wrinkles which manifest in the form of these uh, lumpy bumpy mounds presumably. I don't know if I buy that 100% um, or even 92%. I still think there's a good chance that it's like just terraforming weirdness. Uh, South Africa 
We already looked at this area, but still considering that these bumpy bumps <laughs> um, might be, uh, gosh, just um, uh, stylization, some type of odd stylization or uh, garnish or whatever it is. Um, again, the idea that these are termite mounds, that's still a leading possibility for this particular area, especially since uh, Namibia nearby does have a bunch of termite mounds. Uh, I'd say this looks a little different from that, but um, uh, yeah, we're just studying it, considering it. Jordan, now this, this area, uh, good chance these uh, circular um, mounds are piles from when this area was worked over, but the uh, just the general look and the scale of the working over, uh, I don't think it's a modern project, or if it is, I don't think it's uh, a down-to-earth explanation. So just considering that in the context of bumps, and then I include this image of Petra just as a uh, reminder that uh, also in Jordan, we have these huge um, uh, com combo uh, co combination uh, sorry I can't think of the word um, these areas uh, like Petra where you have both archaeological anomaly and um, large-scale rock anomaly like at the same site so uh, it, to me this is like especially like like this type of thing here. To me, this is like evidence that, uh, and just the site as a whole, it's evidence that the, um, uh, the strangeness that went on at Petra with the archae archeological aspect to it doesn't just stop at the archeological aspect. It extends to uh, the, um, the large scale earth, um, uh, con configuring and uh, reworking of the Earth's surface uh, somehow. And here we see these, um, well, we could even call these dots somewhat uh, in accordance with the theme of this video, but yeah, just these long lines of <laughs> dots and uh, circular holes. So circular holes and square holes, that's going to be a huge, huge part of the archaeological discussion uh, coming up. Uh, it's another one of these big calling cards and uh, yeah it's a it's a dead giveaway of some type of grand unified project as I will get into uh, in uh, a later sh series um, coming up hopefully within the next couple months okay so Syria similar look to Jordan Go back to that one image. So similar look to this, and not too far away, I guess. Uh, but yes, yeah, Syria has this look. So presumably piles from when these areas were worked over, whether modern or some long time ago, or both. Uh, or they might just be not piles of removed material, but just some type of odd stylization according to some strange procedure. Same thing in Bolivia. It's tempting to say it's just mining. Uh, I'm even tempted to say that, but uh, I don't know. I don't, my words are failing me here, but yeah, I don't. I've said it before already. Anyways, it might be artificial weirdness. Uh, okay, Iraq. Here's just another uh, channel with, with bumps alongside it, which doesn't appear to be used for anything, but it could have just been used like in the past few decades and then abandoned. That's possible. But then also nearby, or somewhat nearby, uh, in Iraq we have this denty landscape. We'll take a look at this in Google Earth and 
trying to figure out why there's all these kind of scoop marky, uh, pock marked uh, patterns covering a pretty vast area. So we'll take a look at that and try and figure out what's going on. Peru, we have this nice band of holes, which I talked about before. I'm, I'm calling that kind of like, uh, uh, just like, I don't know, like the inverse, inverse of a, a bump, just a hole. It, it, but it, it's kind of the same idea and it serves the same purpose. It's just like a idiosyncrasy on the landscape. And it's just another variation that's uh, somewhat similar looking. So uh, bumps and dents. So this is a, a big long strip of these uh, holes or indented uh, dug out uh, this earth here. And you see it pretty good contrast here in this image. Just a pretty stark area of bumps and perhaps a deliberate mystery or a, yeah, like a deliberate curiosity as an attention trap or any number of possibilities. Certainly could have been functional at one point. Um, like somebody doing some type of systematic uh, looking for... Uh, I don't know, mining or something, but uh, to me, it's just more of the strangeness. It's more, it's like the Nazca lines and all of that, and uh, and the steppe geoglyphs of Kazakhstan. Just odd patterns, odd patterns, odd patterns, strange patterns everywhere, and we are meant to ask why. I think. So I, th I think with these types of phenomena, there's definitely a, a planned um, subcontext or sub meaning, like a, a, uh, a meaning, <clears throat> an embedded meaning beneath the surface. So, uh, so you're supposed to go a layer or two or three deep and, and ask, wait a second, why is this here? And why does it resemble this thing over there? And why does, like, what, what is all of it? Like, what's, what's behind it all? Uh, and so I, again, I'll say I do think these uh, these strange patterns serve some type of psychological purpose, if not multiple purposes, and just kind of almost like stacked rocks here, so like rings of stacked rocks, or like rubble piles with a hole in the middle. Could have even been fire pits, but the scale of it. Is, is basically too big for it to have been like primitive tribes. That's my contention at least, and I've heard some other, or read some other people thinking the same thing. So this is called a uh, full dragon in Wales, and it's a big hill fort, as it's called. It's got these kind of walls around, and so according to this one article I was reading, um, uh, Iron Age hill fort, the remains of at least 227 leveled house platforms have been found inside. And so these, uh, these, these stone um, piles, they're called cairns, but that's just a fancy word. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, it's just a fancy word for a nothing burger, as far as I'm concerned. A cairn, C-A-I-R-N. So... A cairn isn't really anything, it's just like a, a, a stone nothing uh, circle. Like a, a, a silly stone configuration is what a, a cairn is. And I'll be talking a lot more about cairn, cairns and similar mound-like uh, and stone circle-like uh, features in future videos. But for now, just saying, uh, yeah, we got these uh, goofy bumps with some dense in them uh, on top here. And then we have these uh, alleged uh, leveled house platforms, which are these dents in the la landscape. But I'm saying that's there's a good chance that that's false. Uh, we have these grooves and wall, like similar to a wall. And they're calling this a fort, but I'm just calling it a big 
uh, a fake uh, archaeological site or a big uh, contrived, um, almost like a practical joke <laughs> or the output of this weird uh, uh, something which gave the earth a makeover and this is looking similar to like the denty landscape in Iraq. Let me go back a few images. So, uh, well, first of all, like this uh, in Peru, and then where were we in? Yeah, Iraq here. We have this dented, a lot of indentations on the landscape. So, let me go back to that example here. So, I'm saying these examples are not leveled house platforms. They are just the weird dents, which uh, are, are meant to be like a, a filler for a uh, feature or for um, just like garnish or uh, finishing touches or just, um, just, yeah, just like fluff or just filler features, if that makes sense. So, a couple more images here. Get a good sense of uh, what's going on there. The odd grooves, the odd mounds, and uh, I'm, yeah, it's. I pretty much said what I wanted to say on this. Just and it's pretty large scale too, as you'll see. Can't really get a feel for it in these images, but it's a very big site, and I don't think these are leveled house platforms. I think these are. Just goof, goof dense. Okay, so this uh, blog, or, or I think the site is called BitTubers. This guy, uh, landbeforetime.blogspot.com, I think, is his blog. And then he talks about uh, star maps of e Ethiopia. I don't think it's a star map, but I do think it's an interesting example. Here's uh, an image of these bumps or mounds of rock piles and they're just chilling out here in the open and they look like this uh, from Google Earth and we will uh, take a look in Google Earth and uh, see what's going on here once again just uh, just gibberish in my opinion or filler feature uh, which serves some strange psychological purpose or Something like that. Just like uh, idiosyncratic details to uh, like fill in the background of human experience, perhaps, or that's just one possibility, but uh, I don't think they're functional. I think they're pseudo-functional or meant to look like they could be functional. And uh, yeah, I guess there's no point in repeating myself a bunch of times, so we'll move on. And this, I think this might be a volcanic field of some kind uh, in Syria. Uh, noteworthy that we have a ton of stone circles in the area. And then we also have some modern work in the area, a whole bunch of vehicle tracks going on. So we'll try, we'll try and figure out what's going on here. These are fairly large, um, yeah, possibly volcanic mounds or whatever they are. Uh, there's a chance that these are part of the uh, artificial weirdness. Uh, there's a good chance they're just natural like we would normally suspect they are. Uh, but then we have the stone circles in the area and some other potentially weird stuff. So we'll, uh, we'll take a look there and try and figure out what's going on. Okay, and uh, kind of lumping some additional topics into this uh, bumps topic, uh, like I said before, but um, this is more uh, more of the dense phenomenon, just on a smaller scale and in a different context. So I think when I really uh, lay this case out for you, you'll kind of shit your pants, like, because <laughs> uh, I mean you may have noticed it already if you've been studying this stuff a while. But like these dents, um, I'm saying they're completely non-functional. They're just like big dildos, or like so these things are like plumbuses. These blocks and the site as a whole is like a plumbus, like this uh, meandering uh, rocky uh, um, or stone uh, ridge or um, protruding uh, ledge there, and these, and these, and these. 
those are purposeless, this knob too. So, and they're configured in such a way that like, it's pretty obvious that they weren't um, uh, perfectly formed to begin with. They were like, to begin with, they were formed in these wonky, derpy patterns before they even started, started eroding. That's my contention anyway. Um, so we'll take a look at those and uh, see if I can get my keyboard game straight. I'm struggling here. Um, okay, so here's just another angle of these, sorry, these dents. And uh, yeah, uh, so this is just an example of uh, that same principle of bumps and dents and uh, random little hiccups uh, in uh, mapped to the domain of archaeology and uh, megalithic building. So that uh, that hiccups principle uh, bumps would be one example of that, or even like. Elon Musk uh, crashing his little truck on the freeway. That's like a little uh, hiccup map to human affairs, possibly. I mean, there's obviously other explanations as well, but like just the, the little irksome hiccup is a strategic um, tool in the arsenal of whatever's behind all this. And bumps is one of those types of hiccups. Like, oh, this little weird little idiosyncratic hiccup uh, um, interrupting the, the pattern here or uh, adorning the pattern. Same thing with this thing. Like we're meant to uh, say, oh, it was melted stone and all that. And I mean, uh, or like sandbags or petrified, whatever. There's a million different explanations that we could, uh, we could talk about with this with. But first of all, why? Like, I don't, I don't think the why gets talk, talked about enough. And then, like, why even make this to begin with? And then um, uh, these uh, these dents, or uh, even, like, partial dents, uh, I'm saying these are not byproducts of the construction, but rather they're uh, deliberately imposed on the, um, the rock as a uh, kind of finishing touch um, to help the site as a whole achieve whatever it's trying to achieve. Um, and, whoops, sorry, I get a little clumsy with my keyboard sometimes. Um, this is Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. And we have a, uh, another circular hole here and just purposeless and just um, out of place, much like the ones we see in the... Uh, so I'm arguing this is done for the same purpose as the, the bumps on the landscape. It's just like a, an out of place little hiccup idio idiosyncrasy. Same thing. So this is a Roman quarry um, and allegedly and a Roman, uh, I can't talk to you. Uh, allegedly a Roman quarry. And I say allegedly because uh, I, I'm not buying it. I don't think this is an actual quarry. And there, there's so much amiss with Rome that I'm, wondering if Rome was even a real thing at this point. And again, we have the, the hallmark or the calling card of these little holes here, these dents uh, showing up pretty ubiquitously, ubiquitously across uh, many domains and many sites, certainly in archeology. span Here's this wonky uh, coffin lid. And this is a huge, huge thing. Like you can't get a sense of the scale from just this image, but this is a pretty massive lid, like, I don't, I don't know how, how wide, but, um, but yeah, we have the dents on the lid, which I'm arguing are not damage. And then we have this, uh, this uh, damage um, or pseudo damage here, which is basically the same idea, just a different look to it. It's the, this lid was um, brought into being already warped like this is my uh, uh, hypothesis. So these dents, I'm saying that's not damage. That is uh, like the bumps and dents we see in the landscape, just a awkward little hiccup, an awkward pattern for an awkward human experiment.
Here's another one. This thing is huge. This is Ramses II, I think. See how big he is in uh, comparison to these people. So this is a huge, huge, huge uh, statue just laying down here. And we do see some damage or apparent damage. Uh, I, I would question that, although that, that may be less suspicious than uh, this dent right by the belly button here. So this is what I'm referring to. This um, We have the belly button right here. And then this is yet another goofy dent. <laughs> and it doesn't belong there. And I have, man, like thousands of images of, of this dent or whole thing in the archaeological domain to, uh, to show you. Here's another angle uh, right there. And that's, um, one more time I'll say I'm postulating that that's not damage. Um, <clears throat> not damage. It's just a uh, uh, wonkiness. It's wonkiness. It's uh, derpy, gibberish, um, artificially um, introduced into the mix as a kind of a head scramble, or at least to... Uh, to muddy the water of what's going on, or just to create a strange, mysterious uh, object of study. And we see a similar type of agenda behind stuff like this in the background. Just weirdness, just goofy proportions and all that kind of stuff. Slightly getting off topic here, but uh, this is um, some type of figurine or statue. And one of these is a remake, I think. They may both be remakes. But again, we have the dents, and they're deliberate. And I'm not even going to comment on the masturbatory posture there, which is also um, sexuality is used in a weird way or kind of scrambled as part of this larger agenda behind all the earthworks and archaeological stuff. But... Um, that's probably a topic for another day. These these dents, though, uh, I'm saying these serve the same purpose as the bumps and indentations on the Earth's surface, and they are not damaged. <clears throat> so that is all the images for today. In the next video, we will go look at some of these examples in Google Earth, and uh, I hope you join me. All right, thanks.